with an Iroquois Mohawk, and uh, she said she had a story for us after much threatening. And how we would like to hear it, Sherry. Well, I, I wanted to think about a, a lot of the things that I have um, that I could share, and this one really stands out to me the most. Um, my, my pastor's uh, daughter uh, had become a heroin addict, and she got involved in, in drugs from her husband. They started on, um, she was one of those, um, you know, say no to drugs. She was part of that campaign in high school. And uh, when she was in her mid-twenties is when she started doing drugs with her husband for the first time. Um, they had done, they started out with marijuana and uh, worked their way up to shrooms and mushrooms and all, all this other stuff until they got into heroin. And once she was into heroin, um, she became full-blown addicted. One of the, the people that was her dealer is the, the one that I wanted to tell the story about. Um, he was a, he was a, a very big, um, heroin addict himself, had resorted to stealing to, um, supply, you know, to meet his habit and started actually almost like pharmaceutical, you know, like a illegal pharmaceutical. He started mixing his own stuff and everything. And um, he ended up uh, in a relationship with a girl that had never done drugs, and she had done heroin once, and she didn't like it. And so they, he kept doing the lifestyle, kept getting deeper into heroin, and finally she got fed up with him, and she was in college and everything, she got fed up with him, um, his illegal activities and the criminal behavior, and just the addiction itself, and she said, okay, I want you to shoot me up this time, and I guess she had snorted it before, and uh, so he did, and she died, and uh, he went into... Uh, a very serious depression. Uh, he no longer cared about his life. His name was Matt. I don't even know his last name, but his first name was Matt. And basically what he did is he took an intended overdose of different drugs, knowing that it would kill him. And his he uh, his body began to shut down. He was in the you know into the intensive care unit. He rushed to the hospital, went to intensive care, and basically they called the Catholic priest who gave him his last rites because all of his major organs were shutting down. And his mother was a uh, Catholic, and uh, my pastors and I were of the more of the Pentecostal faith, and we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and that sort of thing. And we were so tired, we had already lost a couple people to heroin, and my pastors had already been battling with their daughter with heroin. And now this young man's girlfriend had just died, and now he was dying. And we had had enough. And so my pastor had called me, and she told me what was going on. I said, let's pray. I said, in fact, let's get that mother on the phone. She's in the hospital. I believe they were in Mount Prospect. And I said, I don't know where her faith level is. I said, but let's get her on the phone. And I said, let's pray. And, I, and we did. And honestly, this is going to sound crazy, but I could get you the name of that woman. I bet you she would do a video to testify what I'm telling you now. But um, we came in agreement with her that she wanted her son back and that um, we said, I don't, we don't know where your faith level is. I said, but we want to come in agreement that if two of us shall agree upon earth for any one thing, it shall be done by my Father in heaven. And I, we said, will you agree with us? And she said, yes. And we began to pray. And we be, we began to command that his life would come back because we felt it had been stolen from him. And we commanded his body to be healed and to be restored. We, we were praying based on our faith in the name of Jesus and the Christian faith. And he everything was planned for his death. And like I said, one vital organ after another was shutting, beginning to shut down. 
The next day, he wasn't expected to make it through the night. The next day, his toes started to twitch. And other parts of him began to move. And he just began to slowly and slowly and slowly come back and come back and come back. Everybody had already written him off as dead. And finally, he woke up. And when he did, he started yelling and screaming to the point that they had to tie him down. And he said, how did I come back? He said, I was with her. He goes, we were at peace. She was safe. She was okay. I was happy. He said, how is it that I'm here? I knew what I was doing. I took that intended dose. I knew what to mix to make sure my life ended. How did I come back? And he was so angry. He said, you took me from her. And they had to put him in the psychiatric unit because he was in restraints in the bed. And he said, if you let me out of here, I'm going to do it again. And I'll make sure this time I don't come back. He said, I'll make it even twice as bad. He went into the psych unit. He was there for months. And he's alive today. So the reason I say that is because there's so many people that are struggling with drugs and addictions and various things. And I know that there's different beliefs and all that. But I wanted to share what is a, what we know is to be a miracle in our faith. And that we literally just read the word of God. We literally took it at what it was and combined faith with it. And we came together with two other people and said, hey, this isn't right. We're going to pray. And we're going to believe that this man's going to come out of this. Because we knew he couldn't come out of it. And he proved he didn't want to come out of it for himself. And that mother has a son that's alive now. And he's off drugs. His life turned around. And we're talking about a man that had been addicted for years. So I wanted to give someone hope that may be watching. That has someone that's in an addiction. That there is freedom. There is hope. And to hold on. Even when everyone says it's done and over. It's not over until God says it's over. Wow. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you, Sherry. You're welcome. Thank you.